Okay, if you will please stand for the call to worship. Found in your bulletin. Sometimes our hearts are shut up like the doors that imprison the disciples. Come, Holy Spirit, with your mighty wind of justice, blow open these doors and release us. Darkness floods our souls, and we wonder if we will ever see the light again. Come, Holy Spirit, let the flames of fire touch our hearts and our spirits and burn away our fears and frustrations. We sit huddled in our own worlds of alienation. When will we ever feel the power of your love again, O oh Lord? Come, Holy Spirit. Fill our lives with your love and free us to reach out to others with the goodness of your eternal presence. Amen. Our hymn of praise is O Spirit of the Living God. That's number 539 in your hymnal.
offer the opening prayer, and please remain standing. Spirit of wind and fire, come to us this day. Free us from our fears. Lift us up when we have fallen. Dust us off and set us squarely on the path to hope you have set before us. Remind us that we are never far from your presence. Get us us ready ready for the great great adventure and opportunities that lie before us. Help us to be good and willing workers for you. In Christ's Christ's name name we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. And you may be seated. Now for the act of praise, which you'll find on page 826. That would be Psalm number 104. And we'll do uh, verses 24 through 35. sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. There go the ships, and Leviathan, whom you formed to play in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it. When you open your hands, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. And you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles. Who touch the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have been. May my meditation be pleasing to the Lord in whom I rejoice. Let sinners be consumed from the earth and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Apostles' Creed, which is on page 881. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Lord be with you. Now we're going to pray together. Um, before we pray together, I just want to take, ask you to, if you have any concerns and joys that you want to share with us and pray with us today, uh, please raise your hands. I think you're getting quieter as the time goes by. Yes, Rachel? And Tim? All my brothers and sisters, Jerry, Johnny, Jeannie, Kathleen, David, and Andy. You have a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Lisa? To see such a good turnout of the church at uh, Bob's funeral. Mm, yeah. And please uh, keep the surviving family in your prayer so that they experience the comfort and consolation from God's. Now let us bow our heads for a second. Uh, let's pray on our own in silence to give our joy, conscience, and worries to our good Father of God. And let's pray for the, those who are suffering from the physical difficulties in our congregations as well. Now let us pray. In your mercy, hear our prayers. God, we thank you for gathering us in this place of worship so that we can listen to your words, that we can praise you to your name, and then be touched by your words and grace once again, so that we can live up to you by your words and by your spirit, God. That because of the spirit, the bars of the prisons melt at the power of your Spirit of God. We praise and thank you for the fulfillment of the promise made by your Son Jesus that you would have a counselor, a guide, a mediator. We thought we could feel no greater joy than we felt on Easter Day when the good news of Jesus' resurrection greeted our ears. But this surpasses all that. You have come to us in our imprisonment and freed us. You have given to us a voice of power and hope to proclaim the good news through your Spirit. You have poured out into our lives the Holy Spirit to be with us always. These things are so amazing to us, so we thank you and praise your name. God, as we pray together, we also ask that you be with, uh, that you be with our dear ones who face illness, who mourn, who feel lost and alone, who hurt in so many ways. Help us to reach out to them with loving kindness in the name of the Holy Spirit. God, please strengthen us for the times ahead and give us courage to proclaim your love with our lives because you sent us with your Holy Spirit into this world. God, and make us one in Christ First, God, please help us and give us wisdom and courage and love to keep the oneness that you tied with your loving spirit. God, be praised through our worship and be the center of our worship. We ask this in Jesus' name. And all God's people can say it together, Amen. Amen. Let's get our voice one more time and offer the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Um, before the children move to the, the children's place, uh, can we have a time of recognition about veterans? Because uh, today is the day before the Memorial Day. Sean, how um, you can stay a little bit longer? Yes, please. 
Thank you. Okay, so tomorrow is a Memorial Day. So today is the Pentecost Sunday and also the Memorial Sunday as well. So we want to, this time, we want to honor and recognize our veterans first. So because they sacrifice their time and life into the service to the countries. So without legitimating any kind of you know, war, there is a resonance with the gospel reading. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. So our veterans did that, so we want to uh, recognize and honor them. So if you're a veteran, <laughs> can you stand up for a second, please? And then, including Don, Steve. Okay. Is that all? <laughs> Is it smaller than I expected because uh, some of us are out of town today? But well, let's give the big round of applause to the veterans and veterans' families. Thank you. Okay, you may sit down. Now I offer a prayer uh, for these veterans and those all the kinds of um, service, all all of those who did any form of service to contribute to this country. Let us pray together. Let's pray. Gracious God, at this day, a day before the Memorial Day, we pray for those who courageously lay down their lives for the cause of freedom. May the examples of their sacrifice inspire in us the selfless love of your Son, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please bless the families of our fallen troops, families of the veterans, and fill their homes and their lives with strength and peace. In union with people of goodwill of every nation, embolden us to answer the call to work for peace and justice, and thus seek an end to violence and conflict around in our country and around the world. We ask it through your name. Amen. 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 Children. Okay, our, our scripture reading today is from uh, the uh, New Testament. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. And there's going to be pronunciation of a lot of countries that uh, are not familiar to most of us, especially myself, so bear with me on that part. In verse 1, When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound came from heaven like the rush of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributed and resting on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one heard them speaking in his own language. And they were amazed and wondered, saying, Are not all these who speak Gala uh, Galileans? And now is it that we hear, how is it that we hear each one of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontius and Asia, Phrygia. Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Abrams, Abrians, Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocked and said, They're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, 
Let this be known to you, and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. For these men are not drunk, as, as I said. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Yea, and on my manservants and my maidservants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heaven above, and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and manifest day. And it shall be that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Now let us express our gratitude toward God by offering of the gift that he brought to you. so that we can live up to by your words and spirit. Please be with us and be the center of all of the ways in the ministry that we use these gifts. We pray in your son's name. Amen. 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 Now you may be seated. Okay, happy Pentecost Sunday to everybody. Uh, today is Pentecost Sunday. It's just a great celebration of the Holy Spirit and the third person of the Trinity. Okay, before I begin our worship, uh, big quick line message, I just want to welcome a family <laughs> from my previous churches you know, visiting us today. I met him just by coincidence uh, 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 last Tuesday, and uh, he, he was saying that I would visit your church pastor, and uh, he, <laughs> he did it today. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, the Mr. and Mrs. Han and your families, please stand up for a second so that we can work, welcome you. Thank you. Thank you for being in the church. Yeah, you may be sitting. I hope and pray that it will be a great experience to your family as well. Okay, to begin today's message, um, I just wanted to suggest uh, upon this Pentecost Sunday, the meditating upon the number one, Two and three, that symbolizes something, uh, will tell us a lot of what we need to know about the Holy Spirit. Um, let's think of the number one as the symbol of unity. Okay? When we want to talk about unity or oneness, 
We always mention the one, saying we are one. So the number one, this can be the symbol of the unity. So unity is good, and everyone is for unity. However, there is also a flip side. If the one is sort of unilaterally emphasized, if we too much focus on just oneness, what happens? You get oppressive unity. Now, you get a unity that excludes any sort of diversity, any sort of individuality. So let's think about everybody just in, in a lockstep, everybody in a lockstep in the moving radically. Like you can find the scene in a novel for the dystopia. I remember as a kid, um, I have watched a lot of films and the scenes and the pictures from North Korea. And then everybody, every kid in the films, they were wearing the same outfit, the same little hat, the same little red boot, and the same face, and the same smile, and the same. So that might be the unity, but no one wants that kind of uniformity without democracy or individuality. Or we can say it as an oppressive totalitarian unity. In history, in human history, the many countries have experienced this kind of totalitarian unity and it was not good at all. So that was the flip side and that's the shadow side of the one. So the one gives then to the two. I would say the number two, this two is the symbol of diversity, all of, uh, all of otherness. Um, there's you and there's me, and there's this, there's that. So we have individuality, this is good too. And everybody likes diversity, and that's a good thing. Individuality, self-expression, and we know not everyone is the same. That's the great, and we have overcome totalitarianism in this way, which was the downside of the one. However, in the same way, if you unilaterally emphasize the two, what's the flip side of it? What do you get? Diversion. Yes, you get conflict, you get diversion. I got my area, this is my right, and it's not yours. And you're doing what you're doing, and it's yours, but it's not mine. <laughs> and somebody said, here's my way of thinking, my way of acting. It's not yours, and you don't tell me what to do. So two, it's good, but it corrects a problem with the one, but it gives rise to its own problems, conflict and diversion. Therefore, the three, the, the three, what is the, the symbol of the three? Trinity. It's a trinity, and the, the third person of the trinity, I mean, the three is a symbol of unity and diversity. It's a wonderful expression, the unity and diversity. It's not my own expression, it's from many theologians. In trinity, what's trinity? We have unity in diversity. It's the reconciliation of opposite. It's communion. It's one with. It's saying one and two at the same time in a harmonious way. It's saying if you want the best of unity and the best of diversity. And who is the Holy Spirit that we want to talk about today on the Pentecost Sunday? The love that connects the Father and the Son. God is three not monolithically one, not simply a play of dualism. God is three persons. Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer. Or the lover, the love, and shared love, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit par, par excellence is the, the Holy Spirit is the expression of the threeness. 
the, this reconciliation and harmony and communion within us. Because the Holy Spirit enables us to be connected to each other and it sustains the community of the faith, the church. This is where we need the Holy Spirit. Now with all that in our mind, I know it's a little bit abstract, <laughs> the one, two, three, and the unity and diversity things. But we'll make it concrete by looking at uh, the today's scripture from Acts chapter 2, uh, which is the directionary it gives us today. In verses 1 through 4, the tongues of the fire descend. It's the famous instance. When the disciples prayed together after Jesus ascended to heaven, the fires, the tongue of the fire, Descended, the great wind happens, and the disciples receive the Holy Spirit. And now look at the outcome of it. The res- what's the result? Verse 5 and 6. Now there were devout Jews from every nation on the heaven living in Jerusalem. They are there for the great feast of Pentecost. So to attend the, in, in, in the liturgy, the ceremony for the Pentecost, they came to the Jerusalem. Verse 6, And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in their native language of each. So the, they were amazed and astonished and asked each other, These people are Galileans. And how is it possible that each of us, each of us hears them speaking in our native language from these Galileans? And then, if you look at the scripture and how the way the Luke, the author of Acts, describes this scene, there are the things when you look at the, uh, how he lays it out to us. Verse 9 and 10. He mentioned a lot of you know, names of the countries. This is very difficult, one of the difficult parts when you read the scripture to properly pronounce all them all. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, and Egypt, and the parts of the Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, and etc., Arabs, and Cretans. The Luke, the author of Acts, he carefully lays out exactly where all these different people are from. He just doesn't list the names of the country. You know, um, he carefully lays out where these people are from. Different backgrounds, different cultures, different countries, different languages. But here is an interesting thing. If you look at a map, I wanted to prepare the map, but our screen size is, is not that really big that everyone can look at the name of this the countries from the map. So if you think about the map of the Mediterranean world and imagine Jerusalem, Israel, at the right at the center of the map. And when Luke mentioned these countries, he lays out these different places as though we are creating a sort of ellipse around the Jerusalem. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, like this, he made this kind of circle around the Jerusalem. He lays out these different places. It's as though we are creating the circle. So his point is, all of these many come together as one through the power of the Holy Spirit. So mind you, the Spirit doesn't deny or negate their manyness. It doesn't say, oh, you know, the Mesopotamians, Judeans, and the Parthians, and Medes, and Elamites, you, you guys all give up your national identities. No, the Spirit doesn't say that. They are confirmed. Yet they form this harmonious pattern around the center through the Holy Spirit so they could communicate with each other. Together. I think that's the work of the three, 
That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit enables us the unity and diversity in our church and this world. It's not crushing, monolithic, totalitarian unity, nor is it simply divisive or conflictual diversity. It's the one and the many coming together in communion through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit enables us this fellowship in our church. So this is the reason why we have to keep, we have to do our every effort to keep this unity in diversity given from the God to the Holy Spirit. I remember um, my pilgrimage to the Holy Land, to Jerusalem in 2012, exactly 11 years ago. Uh, when you, if you go to the Jerusalem as a pilgrimage, there are so many different kind of people from all parts of the world, and I thought they walked to the road to the Galilee, and they walked around the Jerusalem's, and uh, walked to the you know, Golgotha in that Galilee, <laughs> Golgotha and Jerusalem, and they stopped by one of the churches there. And they worship together, even though they have from the different backgrounds, different languages and cultures. And all these people come from all over the world in their different languages, different style of clothes, with their different costumes. But they came together in one, in the name of Jesus Christ. So, I felt like there was the Holy Spirit working around among us. They made different kind of people enabled to be connected to each other and to worship God together. When I look at the different kind of people, there was a cultural diversity, but they are all coming together around Christ to serve Him and His purposes. And they found communions, fellowship in Christ and Spirit, and they were one with unity and diversity. When you go to the General Conference United Methodist Church, there are different people from the different countries. When you go to the you know, revival services or there's a conference for the international you know, revival services, there are different kinds of people from all parts of the world, but they worship together using translation devices through the power of the Holy Spirit. Because Holy Spirit was given to us, He connects us into the oneness. Unity in diversity. I believe that's the mark of the Holy Spirit. There are many fruits. The Bible mentions the fruits of the Holy Spirit. But the mark of the Holy Spirit that we can find in Acts chapter 2, the first time the church received the Holy Spirit, the mark is the unity in diversity through the Spirit. And so we should apply this into our life. When you walk into the community, when you walk into our church, your church, you walk into uh, a group of people in the city, or you walk into a culture, and if, you, if, and if you notice, there's too much one going on around here. Or there are too much two going around there. And the individual, everything, there's still too much of everything the same, or the particularities being um, neglected. Or you say it's too much two, it's too much diversity. Everyone's flying apart. If you notice that, this is where they need the work of the Spirit through us. You know, one of the devils, one of the Satan's names in the Bible is in Greek, in Diabolos. That literally means the scatterer. 
So if you if we notice something like the work of the diabolos, the scatterers in our church, in our group, in our community, that's the mark of the dark spirit. And that's the point where we need the work of the Holy Spirit. It's the three. It's the Holy Spirit that brings the many together as one. Now, with that in mind, I want to look at it again together, what Paul wrote to Corinthians, the first Corinthians chapter 12, the scriptures of the previous two weeks. He says, There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it's the same God at work. Now to each one of the manifestations of the Spirit is given for the common good. And just as a body, I'm going to stop here. That is what we've, been, what we've talked for the last two weeks. There are many different kinds of spiritual gifts. Paul often enumerates them, speaking in tongues and interpreting tongues and the words of knowledge and administration and service and charity, but they are all works of the Spirit. But there is a one Spirit that brings them together, gives them a shared and common good purpose. We should keep these things in our mind as we serve God in our community, in our church, or in our family. You know, um, something the pastors can easily experience in the church ministry and that they hate that happens is sometimes someone's got a real spiritual gift or passion, but then they may fall into the problem of the one. <laughs> so let's say it's the uh, serve to the poor, you know, the compassion ministry. They've given themselves to that and it's Great, but they may say, well, that is what the church is all about. They may say, well, that's what everybody should be doing. And if you're not doing that, you're not really a uh, really good Christian. So you guys who are just focusing on the liturgy or prayer, you know, your individual and your spirituality, or the management of the church, administration, that's not what it's about. It's about working with the poor that we have to focus on. Or you know, there is, or, or uh, in the vice versa, those of you who are you know, so much loving, you know, studying the Bible and uh, love to focus on the spirituality and the prayer and the worship, you know, they 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 may think they may think like. Like, uh, um, look, I'm an intellectual. I want to focus on spirituality. That's my first priority. I want to focus on worship, prayer. And you people out there on the street, it's just social work. <laughs> the ones I say, you know, we have to get out there in the street with the poor. Who cares about what you're doing here? Well, this like my people... If you just go, want to go out and do something in the street, that's just social work. That's what happens. We focus so much on just one thing. And we are trying to impose the one spiritual gift on everybody. But there are other spiritual gifts too. Many gifts different form of the service to our God. But the important thing is we the same spirit spirit works among us. The different forms of service. Um, but the same Lord. Different workings but the same God. This is number three, the work of the Holy Spirit. It's not the monolithic unity, it's not just device unity. It's not just focusing one or two. It's the one and the many 
in the unity and diversity. And then his famous image, the Paul uses a lot, this one. In the same chapter of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, he says, just as a body, so one has many parts, but all its many parts from one body. So it is with Christ. There's this image again. So all the different parts of the body, each one doing its own thing with its own individuality and distinctiveness, but in service of the common good. That is the mark of the Spirit. And finally, I want to look at uh, together the gospel about the Pentecost uh, that is from the John's Gospel, chapter 20. Um, it, it is the Easter night. The disciples, they still don't really know what was going on. They didn't expect that Jesus would really come back to life. So imagine how frightened they were. Their master has just been, you know, pr- brutally put to death and crucified by a hostile and authority, by the soldiers. And they must have thought themselves, look, we are the next. They are frightened. So in their great fear, they gather. He says, on the, on the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, then what happened? Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And shows them his hands and his side. That was salvation to the, all the disciples. We could God and God return in forgiving love, saying, Peace be with you. That means there's no sin that God can't forgive. That means that nothing can separate us from the love of God, as Paul says it. That's what they got. And Jesus says, again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And look at this scene. And with, with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. You know, this is the whole church. As the Father sent me, so I send you. And I'm going to give you from the Father and from me the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit, the third person, the love of God that connects the Father and Son and us. They cipher their love, their power, and courage for each one of us. And Jesus said, Receive the Holy Spirit. The one, the two, the three, the communion in Trinity, they are coming together, and the Spirit was given to us. That's what Jesus has breathed into his disciples. And by extension, Jesus, the God of Trinity, breathed into us the same Spirit. We sometimes forget about we have the Holy Spirit in us. But God breathed on us. Like Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus up down and the cent- just up and down for the many centuries. He's breathing the Holy Spirit into the church. As the Father sent me, so I send you. And what's the job? The disciples and we, whom who received the Holy Spirit and were sent by Jesus. Again, in a world that's split by too much wrong, oppressive unity, too much oppressive diversity. Our job, having received the Holy Spirit, the power of the three, our job now is 
to be bearers of the Holy Spirit to the world and to each other. First in our church, and next to our neighbors and community. So each one of us receives the Holy Spirit because Jesus breathed first the Spirit of love into us and into church and into the world. That's it. That is what happened in the Pentecost. It happened long ago when the tongues of the fire came upon the church, the first church in Jerusalem. And though they were from all over the world, they heard them speaking in their own voice. It was true, true for Paul that many manifestations of the one spirit. And it is also true for us. You've received the Holy Spirit. Now our job is breathe it for us into the world, into our church. And we need to love, forgive, and embrace, and encourage each other to keep the unity in diversity that God created in us. I just hope and pray, if you're spending one more week before we get together, I just want to ask for ourselves, what is the area that I have to, that I should breathe the Holy Spirit into? And what is the area that I have to put the mark of the Holy Spirit to keep the unity and diversity in our church, in our community, and in our world? Let's think about it and let's ask God for the guidance and the power. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for breathing us, your spirit, into us, God. Help us to follow the mark of the Holy Spirit so that we can keep the, all the unity and diversity on the love, encouragement, and oneness, and in one in coming to coming together no matter what difference we have from each other. God, we cannot do that by ourselves, by our own power and might. God, help us through your Holy Spirit. Make us one in Christ, one in ministry, one into the world. And use us the work for the work of the Holy Spirit and guide us. And help us to experience the great joy that we can find as we work for your kingdom with the Spirit. We pray this in your Son's name. Amen. 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 Now let us all rise again and let us sing the hymn of dedication that is in the hymn number 420. Sally, do you have any presentation? Do you have a presentation from children? Okay. Now let us sing together uh, the, the hymn number 420, The Breathe on Me, Breathe of God. Breath of God.
of the uh, Pentecost, a very abbreviated <laughs> story, and I want to thank Miss Linda Heller for giving us our props today. So, oh, let's see, who are this? Hound, get over here. <laughs> okay, here you go. So, all the disciples were gathered together in one place in Jerusalem, and suddenly the sound of a mighty wind from heaven came whooshing down. Make a blow, guys, make a blow. Yes. And on top of their heads, there were tongues that split apart and were like fire. And the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they started talking in languages that everyone in Jerusalem could understand. The disciples were Galileans. They didn't know all these languages, but God did. And filled with the Holy Spirit, they were able to spread the good news of Jesus Christ to many that day. And the they, people who heard them were just amazed and kind of confused, trying to figure out how these people could speak in their own language. But it was because God welcomes all. He wants all to be saved. And because of Pentecost, it is, and here now, hold it, don't do anything with it yet, you guys. Pentecost is a day we celebrate in the church because it is, why do we celebrate Pentecost, Sean? Because why? What is it? It is the church's birthday. So on the count of three, we're going to tell the church happy birthday. You guys ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Happy, happy birthday! birthday! Thank you, Pastor. Okay. Thank you for the presentation. I, I think we're just going to stay up here for benediction. Okay. Let us do it. Now go for some peace. Emboldened by, and encouraged by the power of the Holy Spirit. May the saving grace of the Jesus Christ and the grace love of God the Father and the guidance and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain in you this day and forevermore. Amen. 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 Amen.